Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review. It's your questions answered. We try and do this every week where the show is driven by you guys. If you want to send your Rangers questions in to myself and Joshua, who is at Rangers Review HQ, we'll get through as many as we possibly can. And there's been a few questions that have been sent in already to get our teeth stuck into Joshua. It may be International Week. Uh, but there's always stuff to talk about when it comes to Planet Rangers. Uh, we'll kick off with the first question that popped in uh, to uh, the comment section. Uh, YouTube user, um, you need to choose your, choose your own username, buddy, and set, put your avatar picture in there. However, let's uh, get on to the question. It says, is Michael Beal trying to be too clever? Pace up front made their backline play further back. Talking about Celtic, I imagine. Uh, and Todd Cantwell done a, a great job nullifying it. McGregor, why change it this time? That is a, I've seen that mentioned by a few different sources. Joshua, Michael Beale perhaps overthinking things and um, treating the opposition with uh, greater respect than he should be. Um, what do you make of this point that YouTube user is making? I, th I think the topic of overthinking is is fair. I don't think he's as reactive to the opposition as as um, you're maybe suggesting. Uh, but I think it's hard to argue against the overthinking point because you know there's been nine different starting elevens for nine different games. I don't think that's necessarily fostered a kind of the relationships that that need to work for his team to build because I think of the freedom you see that. Rangers players have in the final third when things are changing week to week, maybe more dependent on what he needs game to game. I don't think that's worked. And we wrote about it on the website for today, Derek. I don't think there's a clear... Rangers don't have a clear strongest team at the moment because we've not seen that over a concerted number of games. But they also don't really have a strongest front three. We've seen Lammers, Danilo and Dessers a couple of times. Um, but only a couple of times. Only from the start a couple of times. Now, I don't think there's necessarily... Um, the pace or kind of dynamism in that front three for me to be really convinced it'll work at the outset. However, I think there's different ways to work solutions around that. For example, I think Ross County away was a great example of Rangers didn't have a lot of pace in the front three. I think it was Ruth Dessers and, and Lammers that day, but the runs beyond from Raskin or Tavernier gave you that in behind threat because of the way that Ross County were, were defending. But if a team does set off, I guess the question is how do you, do you then trouble that space in behind them and um, I'd like to see more consistency in the front three. I'd like to see more of of the needle, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, just just as a, I guess as a, an aside point, I think the point that YouTube user uh, is making <laughs> is spot on. Though, and, and we've got a piece on the website that covers this in more detail. We've got a members video on um, Monday that, or, or Tuesday talking about Rangers pressing issues. I think what Bill was trying to do, I don't think it worked, but to to address what the game plan was was similar to in a way, what Rangers did against PSV, what we saw them do in pre-season, which was when they press with that front three, it looks as if they're outnumbered, but it's all about trying to work different pressing traps and, and maybe pressing traps into the centre. I think that's why Raskin played in, in the, the centre of midfield to try and jump up onto McGregor, but as is covered in the piece because of the way Celtic played, I don't think that really materialised. I think there looked to be a lot of indecision off the ball for Rangers, but more than anything, not, not only did the game plan... Uh, I think not really sees the occasion, Derek, because it's 50,000 people there. They won't, it, it, it's just kind of an occasion that demands you play at a high intensity. And it's not really a game, I think, to sit off and, and pick your moments. I think that you work against yourself or you set yourself up, not necessarily to fail, but I think you give yourself a harder task by approaching a game like that. Um, mm -hmm. And, and the, the comment here is right as well, because in the past, I think when you've seen Beals teams perform well against Celtic, even if they hadn't had results. It's, it's been a proactive approach now. There's been different ways they've, they've done it. But I think to everyone inside Ibrox at the weekend, whether Rangers were proactive or reactive, uh, whether the, the deal would, whatever he'd say on that, I don't think the sense within the stadium was that Rangers were taking the initiative. I think the perception was that they were showing off and, and, and showing too much, uh, sitting off and showing too much respect. And, Again, while I don't think it, it was about that, I think it was more about trying to force errors out of the two Celtic defenders, which you saw for the disallowed goal. That's how it, it was perceived. So I think Rangers needed a, a more aggressive approach. I think they needed um, more intensity that, that happened after the break, for whatever reason, whether it be the defence sitting too deep, Raskin not jumping up at the right time. Campwell was, was so deep, deeper than Ryan Jack for a lot of the second half. The balance just didn't work, and maybe that does come into the fact that Throughout nine games, we've seen Rangers with lots of different starting 11s. We've seen players play in lots of different positions. And I, I think that ultimately did come back to bite them somewhat on Sunday. 
Yeah, it was a bit of a mess, especially that, that Celtic backline. I think it was there for the taking. I think that's why the yeah. reaction was so angry yeah. at the end of the game. Myself and Chris talked about this in the, the morning show with Kenny Miller's comments saying it may well be the worst ever reaction at Ibrox. And we've witnessed some uh, disappointing results there uh, yeah. in recent years. But uh, yeah, uh, very, just, very... just on that, on that, Derek, it's a great point. I think the Celtic defence were allowed to settle into the game. Now, yeah. they might still have made mistakes as um, the right centre-back, whose name escapes me, uh, Gustav, I can't remember his second name. Lager Bielke. Lager Bielke, there we are. He, he, made, he made a mistake for, um, I don't think that goal should have been chopped off. I'm sure the majority of people watching this video would be in agreement with me, but um, he made a mistake there and Scales made a couple of mistakes as well. I, but I, I just think that Ibrox crowd, the occasion, there was more there to be had, wasn't there? And it's not yeah. as if Rangers' approach didn't concede um chances as well because if you think about the pass that is played over the top for a badder but then the ball's cut back and um Celtic maybe should go one nil up then there was another moment where Maeda almost went down in the box and you know whether there was enough contact for that or not it all came from McGregor being able to get on the ball and being able to play through Rangers because of their approach off the ball so there's no doubt in that it, it didn't work and even though in the moments it, it did work that might come back in, in mitigation to that there was more there to be had and I think that is why the reaction was like it was at full time because it wasn't just um, frustration at the game in isolation. I think it was a real frustration that the Celtic team weren't very good today and they've still they've still beaten Rangers and, and, and I think that's where the majority of that frustration came from. Yeah, uh, imagine Rangers went to Parkhead uh, for the New Year game and Celtic adopted those tactics and sat off. Yeah. You'd be absolutely over the moon. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't understand it whatsoever but the what the intention was at Ibrox on Sunday. Let's move on to the next question. And it's sort of two similar questions, both from Caroline uh, and YouTube user who gets in touch. Caroline says, do you think we are right to get rid of Cholak and Sakala? At this moment in time, I think perhaps no. Uh, I know that Antonio Cholak, it was interesting when, when he gave that press conference after the St Mirren game in the final game of last season, he said he was here to fight and be the number nine uh, Rangers then accepted a bid from Parma, around two and a half million pounds, and the Croatian was on his way to Italy. Fashion Sakala, I think, uh, four million pounds. I think the reported fee went to Saudi Arabia. Life changing sum of money uh, in terms of wages for him. Uh, that was one uh, I could understand him leaving. Cholak obviously wanted more game time than what he was getting. However, I would rather have I would rather have had those two options on the park on Sunday, Joshua than uh, a Serial Dessers, Sam Lammers or a Danilo from what we've seen so far? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously it's not a great time to be uh, to, to be defending the, the summer recruitment up top, is it? I, I think no. Danilo is an exception. In, in my opinion, I think you can see clearly already that he's a better option um, than, than either of those two players. There's maybe, I'll come back and we can talk about Sakala because it's an interesting one. I think there's a discussion to be had where the Rangers have replaced the variety of threats that Sakala gave you and the numbers. Um, but I, th I don't think you or I are seriously going to suggest that he was the answer up top because how many times did we have that discussion last year where he, he did a lot right? He, he perhaps didn't wasn't able to do it in the biggest moments, I think, in those games at hand. And, and I don't think, had you said going into the summer, Sakala is going to be one of your first choice options. That would have been a popular decision either. And Cholak, his goal record spoke for itself. I, I don't think that he uh, had enough Again, variety to his game for the way that Beal or, or any other manager wanted to play to uh, be that option either. We didn't see it much from him in, in uh, big games. Um, I guess you could say that he scored a number of goals against the lower-ranked teams that we've not seen a Ranger striker do yeah. consistently in, in a while. Um, but I don't think he suited Michael Beal's style. De Dessers is an intriguing one because... He, he, there's been moments where I've watched him and you thought he looks really off the pace here or he looks really slow. And there's a few passes over the top at the weekend where you thought he should be getting there. And if you have a striker who's just a bit quicker, maybe even the Cholak's quicker than him over distance. I think this is a, is a really good presser and that might be a bit of a, a boring topic where people might think because he's not fast, he doesn't press well, but I, I do think he does. And also think his final balls looked good so far I think for his pass. Uh, into Danilo, the game at home against Morton. You think of his pass against PSV, his pass for Maton, even though it was offside. Even um, the one for Roof, I mean, uh, th that should stand, and that's good pressing. Yeah, uh, exactly. Good, exactly. Good 
Yeah. Exactly, good press because he cuts off the pass to McGregor and he, and he shows patience and good decision-making in the final third. So it's not as if nothing's been there. And I guess when, this, when the, the current climate is as it is, you're, you're going to... Um, the, the new signings are going to be under even more scrutiny than new signings are at Rangers. You also have moments, I think, back to the game away at Servette where he hits the post. And you think back to moments like that or Lammers missing that opportunity at home to, to Servette and you just think if the rub of the green had went a little bit more in Rangers' favour, does that game become more comfortable? Does a certain player play with more confidence? Because I think Lammers, for me, in pockets has, has shown real quality, but he's not had a consistent run of games. No. Um, he's, he's made a couple, had, had a couple of big misses like at, at the weekend as well. And then minds, minds are kind of made up. And that's what we come, keep coming back to in these topics this week, Derek, is when you don't get results at somewhere like Rangers, you don't buy yourself time. To, to buy yourself time, to whether it be collective team performances or individual performances, it is a ruthless environment and, it, and it's sink or swim. Um, yeah. and, and I think that's now because those new players have come in and there's been these, there now is this negativity going into international break. It becomes more difficult to show your, your best quality. But you need some Rangers need them to step up after the international break because you're already a number of points behind in the league uh, and, and the mood is um, as low as I, I can remember it yeah. being. Um, but yeah, to, I guess to come back to the question, I, I think that the deals you got for those two players made sense. Remains to be seen if that money has been invested well because the, the proof is going to be in the results. Um, I do think, though, from from the, the kind of points we've outlined about certain players, there is certain qualities there. That the difficulty is it's not been shown over a collective period of time. And although all the strikers have scored, none have consistently been a really good option up top, which is, I guess, part of the reason why we're talking about the results we are. Yeah, I don't think there's any room for error now between now and the next Old Firm game for me, for Michael Beal, if he wants to win the fans over. Interestingly, uh, on Sam Lammers, um, you might have seen the, the podcast I did, folks, with the Frankfurt podcaster who told us about Lammers when he was there on loan uh, and sort of I'm getting sort of visions of what, what he told me and, and how he's uh, appeared in his Rangers uh, jersey so far. He says he's got all the talent in the world, all the ability, but for some reason or another, his mentality, he just uh, picks the wrong options and it's something in his head rather than uh, the talent that he's got at his disposal. So uh, hopefully... Uh, he can uh, get back um, to the Sam Lammers that broke through at PSV and then that big money move to Atalanta. But uh, yeah, Jury certainly out, not only in him, but uh, Danilo, who we've not seen anywhere near enough of, and uh, Serial Dessas as well. Uh, there, Stephen, just, just on Danilo, yeah. interested, what, sorry to interject in the, the show notes, but what, what do you think about him so far? Because we've got a year question. I don't even know. Answered. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, uh, yeah, even times on Sunday, I thought <laughs> yeah. the, the ball when he, yeah. he had the chance, obviously it was saved by uh, Joe yeah. Hart. But the ball up to—I don't know if it was Golson that played it up to yeah, him. It was, the control yeah. was exquisite. It was—it yeah. was top notch. But uh, I just think um, he needs a run of games just to get that match sharpness and, and to get up to speed. To, and he's not really had that, has he? Uh, yeah. I don't know why. Even the Ross County game, I was scratching my head before the PSV one. I was—I think most were expecting. Danilo to get the nod up there at, at Dingwall. He didn't do so. Michael Beale sees him in trading. He's obviously not doing what he wants to trust him to, to lead the line. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a head scratcher, really. I'm, I'm not yeah. too sure what the issue is. Yeah, but I think you're right. The thing that stood out to me so far and just watching a bit more of him in detail for the, this piece is movement, I think, has been excellent to earn those chances. And I'm always of the opinion that I'd rather have a striker like Danilo who has made a couple of high-profile misses, namely Servette away, and he should have done better the weekend. Um, I'd rather have a striker like that than a striker who's not getting on the end of, of things yeah. at all. And although he's not got searing pace over range, Danilo, I think you could see with whether it be that chance to move into the defender's blind side or the one where the ball's played across by Sima or um, the chance at the back post against Servet or the way he creates room for himself against Morton. I, I think there is real good signs there as well. But I guess the confusing thing is why isn't he played more and... Ruth coming back in, I don't think anyone would have argued with that. Uh, I don't think anyone would even argue with that in hindsight. Um, may maybe there's an argument that Ruth should have played alongside Danilo. And although he could say, well, Dessers gives you that physical focal point, I don't think Rangers have used him like that so far. It has been more about trying to play sometimes over the top. And, and perhaps, as we've spoken about again in uh, relation to Sunday, Celtic were able to press up and squeeze their back line and play with a higher higher line because they knew that neither uh, Dessers or Roof had the pace to go over the top. But I definitely think that Danilo, you've spent a lot of money on him. Um, comparatively, the excitement is there about him. 
he uh, was fine on starting striker for a, a period of last season. Yeah. I, I think he, I'm, I'm amazed he's not played more. There must be something else, some other reason um, that's not come up in press conferences. And I think when the, the, the lineup is announced for St. Johnson away, would love to see him in that because I think there needs to be more of a clear idea. This is Rangers' strongest front three, and, and surely Daniel needs to be in it. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, Stephen Taylor with a point here that's uh, bring up on the screen. Is the manager too far invested in his current tactics to change? We don't have players to go high and wide in a front three. Neither Tav or Borna have the legs to provide their width going forward anymore. It was something that was levelled prior to the transfer window closing, Joshua, about the perhaps lack of width uh, and Rangers being too narrow is that a concern for you going forward uh, about the, the current personnel? Rangers don't really have that with and, and Tav and Borna players. I think we've seen the, the best of them in the Rangers career and I think they are slightly on, on, on the downward spiral. I don't remember it being an issue last season, Derek. And, and again, that maybe comes into the fact that the team team selection has been um, has changed so frequently. But I think last season you had Sakal was able to... Um, at points, offer you that wide threat, and although he was he wasn't starting as a winger, his natural tendency, the the, the variety he gave you in there, Kent as well, meant that at times, whether it be out wide or, or in the centre against a against a, um, a a team that was sitting in and defending, you had that option of someone who's going to take someone on at pace, whether that be out wide. So the examples, two examples that come to my mind is Scott Arfield's goal. Um, his equaliser against Aberdeen come in the 2-2 game, that crazy game, comes from Ryan Kent initially taking on his man at the edge of the area, isolating himself one versus one against a defender, being able to go by him at pace, commit him and, and earn the shot, which Arfield would convert. Or if, or if you think back to Campbell's goal against Celtic in the, the last old firm of the season, Sakala rotates out to the, wide to the right. And for that moment, although he's not starting as a winger, he gave Rangers that kind of 1v1 superiority and that attracts two players if you watch the goal back which then earns Lundstrom's shot and, and Campbell's goal so not directly but the fact is that Rangers had players in their starting 11 who for one reason or another demanded that two players be on them when you're looking at the starting 11 if let, let's say the front six is Raskin, Campbell, Sofuentes, Lammers, Benilo and Dessers which I think at the start of that Livingston game at the start of the season that's kind of what we all thought it would mm. be domestically. Lammers gives you that 1v1 threat not at the same pace as, as uh, as Kent or Sakala maybe, but I think he's the technician in the way that he can outplay one versus one. There, I think there's a question whether there is enough dynamism uh, outside of that, but I think Beal's system relies on players like, let's say, Lammers and Campbell and that in those creative roles in that system, being able to, if a team's really um, uh, controlling the centre and, and, and making it difficult to play through, giving them the licence to go and receive out wide and, and doing different things and being flexible so you can't just say, like, maybe I think what happened to Steven Gerrard's team too much, OK, we're going to just uh, defend crosses because we know that Rangers won't do anything else in the wide areas. And if you think back to remember the game, the 1-1 draw away, one of Itton's many goals against Motherwell, 1-1 draw away oh, at, um, at, at Fir Park. And uh, if you watch highlights of that game back, Motherwell actually allowed Rangers fullbacks to cross. I think it was something like 35 crosses that that uh, that day or something yeah. from, from their wayside. So I don't think we're in, in that territory. I still think Rangers, are, they're, especially in that second half, they were too reliant on crosses um, f from wide areas. I think the plan, though, relies, again, on those two players, let's say it's Lammers and Cantwell, being able to go and offer you different things out wide, even if they're not starting out wide. There's been a lot of questions come in for this questions answered piece about do Rangers move to a back three? And I'm, I'm not normally behind these type of shouts because I think that a squad's been built for a certain profile and you've got to try and use that. But is there an argument if you play Suter and Davies as wide centre-backs, you've got better line-breaking options there anyway than you do in midfield at the moment? You allow Ridvan and Tavernier to play higher and both those players can come inside and, and stay a bit higher. You give yourself more defensive cover it maybe a lot relies less on Rask and being a kind of tempo setter number six, which I don't think he is anyway. Whatever option you opt for coming back from, from the international break, he, he needs to get it right because I think people need to quickly see what the style of football is and why it works. And I think that did happen for large parts of last season, but for whatever reason in the month of August, we, we've not seen that. Yeah, uh, I just don't know what the philosophy is uh, from Michael Beale, what he's, what he's trying to do at this moment in time. Like I say, lots of chopping and changing with the team. Um, uh, and it's, it's led to 
a number of poor results. Greg McBride raises a point here. He says, all early signs in the transfer window pointed towards playing two strikers. Bad result against Kelly. And now shoehorning Matondo into the starting lineup. Has he abandoned his summer plan already? Not entirely sure what the plan is, to be honest, Joshua. But uh, over this international break, he has to formulate one. And it has to be getting back to not only winning football matches, but entertaining the fans. Because uh, aside from the Hearts and Hibs last season, PSV, you could point to this season, it has been a slog to watch Rangers. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I, I You're think not entertained. Season... Not, uh, as, yeah. as, the, as a gladiator film starring Russell Crowe, uh, are you not entertained? No. Yeah. And I guess the thing is, if you get results... That doesn't really matter to a, to a point. Um, if you don't get results, then that's going to come more into focus. And uh, there, there's no doubt that apart from a half here or a, or a half there, the the style of football that Bill probably wants to see hasn't come to fruition. And again, that's why I I think that changing personnel is, has had more of an impact than than I probably considered up until the weekend because those relationships maybe just haven't had time to form. I think in the final third, so much is about giving players like. Campbell and Lammers, the freedom to go. I'm using them. I know Lammers hasn't played much, but he, he's, I think he's, he'd come in to play that number 10 position. If you watch the game against Servet, I think that's a good example of how the dynamics could work, the, the home game against Servet for that first kind of hour. Because you've got Campbell in the midfield, but he's got real license to go and join the attack and especially overload the right-hand side. And you're always going to see, I think, one of Beal's teams overload and, and create an extra man over one side of the pitch. And at the moment, it's the right. I think that's more because Barisic isn't going to kind of combine with teammates as successfully as Tavernier. So, for, for example, Campwell wins the penalty because he's joining in with playing the right spark despite starting that attack from the left. You've got Lammers who can offer you a back-to-goal threat through pressure and give you an extra option in midfield, but then get on the end of cutbacks. And if you remember, there's a great save from the, the Servette keeper uh, with the game. I think by the time, by then it was 2-1 after a Tavernier cutback. And that was a, a, a well-worked move. And then you've got two strikers up front. But you're right, we've just not seen enough of a sustained example of what this, this style is. And that must feed down to the players as well. I think of that second half, um, I think there's a lot of indecision off the ball uh, for Rangers at the weekend. But then especially in the second half, there's a lot of indecision on the ball. I'm very, I'm very much in the camp that when Michael Beale came in, he quickly... Uh, had a, an identity quickly, the play style. I think he did a pretty good job last season within the context of what he inherited and understandably was, was given a bit of leeway with the big games because he didn't have his own players. And, and that's why the pressure is so intense now because he's been here for a while. He does have his players and, and the promise of... Uh, your your dog isn't happy with either. Yeah, the, do the dog's uh, going <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and you know, that promise of um, what people have expected all summer, which is good football to garner results uh, hasn't happened yet so as he abandoned the summer plan i i, I don't, don't think so I, I don't think whatever he's done so far is, is working and um, as we keep coming back to i think there needs to be more of a definitive this is what we're going to do this is uh, the, the the rough 14 to 15 players that are going to start um, and and i think that will help the players in the pitch as well just be rough me. i need to get uh my next door neighbor's key here two weeks oh, okay Right, I'll, how about how about I answer the next question? No, then? that's how you know it's live. Uh, so there yeah. we go. That's that sorted. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, Tam Brown with the point. Do we need mm. to rotate the captain out the side? We need to get Sterling up to speed. And I don't think Tav has two games a week in him anymore. For your comment, uh, Tavernier's come in for a bit of criticism, Joshua. Um, I know that um, many feel, I think, including myself, that he has lost that yard of pace. Understandable, considering uh, he's, he's played pretty much non-stop since he arrived at Ibrox. He's been bombing up and down that right flank um, every week for a great uh, a great number of years now. Um, it's, uh, so is it an idea to... I know he was... Uh, he was rested for the Morton game, wasn't he? Uh, and Dujon Sterling came in. Is it an idea to be looking at him and managing his game time more? Sterling was obviously brought in to play games, wasn't it? And I think yeah. it was telling that instead of, you know, Adam Devine is someone that, that broke in last season, but I thought it was telling that um, Rangers recruited in that area and obviously Sterling can play at left back. I thought he was one of the better players, uh, one of the only decent players uh, in, in Sunday's defeat, uh, old firm defeat. 
you know whenever you speak about Tavernier that the net a guarantee against St. John's in a way put one in the top corner and anything that yeah the, anything that you say is made to look foolish and yeah he did turn up with that big goal in Servet and that goal against Ross County was only a week ago um I, I think that I don't think he had a great game defensively up against Maida. I don't think there's any doubt that of course he's lost the yard of pace because you're going to at any age. I don't think he's the biggest issue in the side. Um, I, th- I think there's other players outside of him who have turned up less and provided big moments less. But at any point in any football team, big players who have been big players for a number of years will, will need to be phased out. Yeah. Um, and and I, I guess that's just a fact of life. But I think you, you saw what Michael Beale thought about Tavernier in his press conference after when he was asked about it. He kind of defended him to the hilt. And um, mm-hmm. I guess when a team isn't playing well, the, the dynamics of that defen- defensively are, are maybe going to isolate uh, fullbacks a little bit more and fullbacks are such important players in this range of sides and I, and I think for people have just watched them for so long that sometimes th- there's just a tire- tiredness attached to the same players making um, n- not not getting exactly where people want Rangers to be which is the most dominant team winning trophies all the time and, and, and playing a lot of good yeah. football but I don't think I think Tavernier will still have quite a few big moments left in his Rangers career. I think Dujon Sterling's come to play games and probably agree with that two games in the week when you're 32. Is he 32 or is he 31? 32, 32 I think 32. October, November time. Yeah, um, played a lot of football. Matt, yeah, uh, I've got a controversial view and I know many people think okay. it's, it's daft, but um, why not Why not play Dujon Sterling right back and just move Tavernier up? Would that not be a solution? Well, I guess the ar- worry about, but, but just focus on the offensive side of the game. I guess the argument is that the reason I think that's never happened is because it's all about what happens ahead of that. What from what what formation do you play to 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 make that happen? Because Tavernier is someone who's going to provide width. I don't think Dujon yeah. Sterling is going to be a player who comes in and plays in the half space and receives in the half turn and, and plays it in behind. So all the, the we, we make fun of that comment all the time because it, it comes up all the time. But there I've is a, seen it though, so uh, yeah, I mean, and, and there is a sensible argument within it that here is a player who is excellent offensively, attacks the ball in the box better than most strikers we've seen at Rangers in the last number of years. Even that goal, I know the, the, the game ends 5 1, but at the point Tavenier puts the ball in the back of the net is to make it 2 1 away in Eindhoven. And um, it's a predictability that he arrives at the back post. So then you're thinking, it's okay, play him higher. I think it's the, the, the reason that won't happen or won't work is because as we Stephen Gerrard spoke about this just before he left he's said James isn't great with his back to goal and I think that's why I've never seen him morph into a kind of real underlapping or inverted fullback who's gonna play really inside the pitch um, and and then the, the argument is where do they both play if, so let, let's say Rangers are at home or, or Rangers are away from home domestically and they they've got Tavernier and Sterling on the same side if it's a back three and you maybe have Sterling making underlapping runs and Tavernier yeah. really high in the last line, it makes sense. If you're just talking about two players like a, a Tavernier and Candais, to use a, a Rangers example, um, I think with the, the importance of having a player in that inside pocket, there's just not space for, for two players. So it makes more sense that if he's having a bad game defensively or if um, you're playing against a certain opponent, play a midfielder who can who can provide more cover for him. But it will be a topic until he doesn't play at Rangers. There, the, the reason that any player is here at Rangers instead of playing up a level is because they've got faults to their game. And I guess you're always trying to mitigate that and, and form a, a system that, that gets the best out of certain individuals um, ahead of that. Team-wide, what you would say, there's been mistakes in the back four, but there's just not been... That I think that the time on the pitch, the, the game time for relationships to form between any players really, and that I think that's what needs to change after the break. Yeah, on relationships forming, Tam Brown just off the back of that says, uh, we've only got St Johnson before Betis have the first team a bounce game in the break to get this relationship thingy going. <laughs> uh, I'd imagine we'll have a, a, a behind closed doors game, Joshua, at, uh, at yeah. Ock and Howie before they come back to play St Johnson, I'd imagine, at, at some point just to get uh, minutes back in the legs of some players. Yeah, you, you, you'd imagine so, and you'd imagine that um, that I think what we've been alluding to the whole time, I, you can guarantee that Michael Beal will, will know the, the pressure he's under, will, will know that you'll have to answer more questions than ever, and that the supporters' reaction at full time, you, you'll have, of course been aware of that. Um, I think it's tight. I, I, if you're managing away at St Johnson after the break, I think if you want to win a few um, brilliant points right away, you put out an attacking team. Yeah. 
you make sure that your team plays with a good tempo and you kind of stick with what you're doing roughly, whether that be Danilo and Dessers and someone behind it, whether it be Danilo up top and, and Lammers and Cantwell, wh whatever it may be, I think you've got to find a bit more of a formula and, and, and stick with it. The relationship thingy, um, I guess that extends to any sort of team, whether it's a team who play in a rigid structure, whether it's a team who has more freedom in the final third, I think that's how you want Rangers to play. And um, I think that's why the the relationship between players matters more because they've got the autonomy to go and make the, make an impact, make the game happen. And if you're playing different roles and different positions alongside different people from game to game, I, I don't know if that necessarily helps. Yeah. Uh, just before we wrap up, I want to tie in a, a few questions together um, and we'll address those uh, before we, we call it a day. Uh, Demo says, uh, why isn't he playing the young lad Yefeko at left back since he can play left back? Uh, and just tying in with the, the youth team players, uh, Greg McBride with a point, if the youth team players were good enough for the first team, they would be with the first team. Uh, and Charles Allen as well with another suggestion. He says, uh, we're crying out for a winger to work with Tav. With the transfer window closed, why can't we look to our academy and pro promote young Thompson Ashaka? He always seems to shine for the B team. We have seen John Yefeko uh, already this season. Joshua, he came in, played the Hoffenheim game, didn't he? And then he played the Morton yeah. game as well. Um, I think the lad's got a, a bright future ahead of him. Thomas Nishaka is, is one that is earning plaudits playing for the B team. Uh, I th don't think he'll be too far away from, from breaking into the first team at some point. But should we be seeing more of these young lads, do you reckon? Difficult environment to throw them into. And you uh, spent so much it? money bringing yeah. a lot of players in. Listen, I think after the international break, beyond the talk of systems and, and what you switch to, you need to see the likes of Danilo and Sifuentes. Yeah. Um, alongside Raskin and Campbell and a system that's comfortable for them and, and let them go and play and, and play your best players who are going to step up for you in big moments. I don't think Raskin, I know you and Chris spoke about it today, I don't think Raskin's had a great start to the season. Is there value maybe in um, in playing a back three with Suter Davies and Goldson and, and that alleviates the defensive concerns somewhat. It allows Redband to play and play a little bit higher up the pitch and, and gives a little bit more defensive cover. It negates your need to play a Tempo set and number six ranges have already played a, a back three in possession quite a lot. I think there is some sort of substance to that argument, but what, whatever that team is against St Johnston, yes, there's going to be changes um, because there's so much football uh, played these days, and Rangers will play three games a week really up until the, 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 the uh, until Christmas time, really after this international break. Whatever is opted for, I, I think you need to stick with that and. Cantwell, whether he plays at number 10 or, or that kind of left central midfield role. Um, I think Rangers have looked at their best this season when you've had Raskin on the right of midfield, Cantwell on the left, someone more defensive-minded, normally Ryan Jack in the middle, um, and, and a three up top, allowing the fullbacks to, to be high and provide the width. But whatever happens, I think uh, Rangers need to stick with it because you need to go and get result against St. Johnson, obviously, but um, as we've alluded to and, and as keeps coming through in these videos, there needs to be a better demonstration of what style and, and what Rangers are, I, th I think, trying to achieve because I think that will, will, will buy a bit more uh, buy-in than, than we've seen over this international break. But it wasn't just the result that I think infuriated people. It was the, the approach um, on and off the ball, especially in that first half. Yeah, uh, we'll wrap up there. Huge thanks to uh, Joshua and to each and every one of you for your questions. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Hopefully we've answered them as best we can. Uh, as I mentioned, we like to do this uh, every week on our member section on the YouTube channel. There's a video coming tomorrow, incidentally, myself and Chris, where we look back on the transfer window, which closed a week to, uh, on Friday, um, of course, last week. Uh, we discussed the outgoings and the incoming. So we hope you can join us for that. That will be out at 12 noon tomorrow afternoon. Uh, right, fo uh, folks, thanks very much for your support as ever, and we'll speak to you a little later on. Bye for now.